we're good. Sorry about that. Yeah. So anyways, going back to the weekly, right? If we're using the idea that, you know, the imbalance, you know, beyond what we would expect for price to do at that specific point, ideally, it's just a way for us to map a trade, right? So um, I think Christina in the questions tab earlier had asked about SMCI and she brought up a great trade and I actually took this trade and I won. So I, I owe you one, uh, Christine. I don't know if you're listening right now, but um, she brought up SMCI and how she was looking. Uh, she said, is this a change in structure? Um, is this, you know, a breaker that formed? And it was. And, you know, the idea there was that despite there being a breaker, and I'm just going to show you the setup in itself, actually, just so you guys can see it and, and it would make sense. But it was great because she found it on her own. And here it is. Yeah. So. Look, I can kind of argue this both ways, and that's kind of where I was at. But I actually used the breaker just as a, you know, as an idea um, to potentially like just take a, a little scalp, right? So my idea here was just first and foremost, I'll leave that there. So you'll notice that we did have relative equal lows, right? So not really the the most ideal setup. If we were to sweep that low and create this same type of look, just a lower wick taking out that, I would have been, you know gung-ho about this setup moving forward the fact that we didn't sweep that low that leaves me weary right if we just think about the overall concept of relative equal lows we have what had to have happened here somebody had to have gone long to push price this way right that's the only reasonable explanation that we could have had now for price to do the same exact thing here without purging or sweeping that liquidity here right we would expect whoever's got money to push price long right if they got enough money to push price long right every tick going in the inverse direction is probably going to hurt, right? Just That's just the way I think about it. I think it's easy to kind of grasp, grasp that idea. Now, with that being said, if you have, you know, a, a low here and, you know, ideally their stop losses are going to be relatively close, right? If they have the power to push price, they're going to uh, not be willing to take uh, a large risk knowing that without them there, this is probably going to tank, right? Similarly, if you were to look over at this same low right here, we did not purge liquidity here, but what had to have happened here? Somebody had to go long to push price higher, right? So I buy into the idea and concept that I'm sure many of you do as well, that, that there's an algorithm that's delivering price, right? Making price go the way that it goes. Just think of it logically as well. I mean, it, you know, think about how many orders are going through on a day-to-day -day basis, all day, every day. For the fact that we can have such immediate feedback, it doesn't seem like it's something that... Um, you know, it, it is really all happening in the moment, if that makes sense, right? I, to me, I think this is a lot of foreshadowing goes on. I think a lot of this is really predetermined, whether it's, you know, specific funds with specific, uh, you know, AI tools, whether it's, um, you know, whatever their trading algorithm, right? We, you can look it up. It's, I think it's 70% of all trading volume that goes through on a day-to-day -day basis is, is, by algorithms, right? It's not human intervention, right? Because you would think about it anyways, any type of order that's coming in, large scale orders, right? And if it's if it's done by a human, it's gonna be kind of sporadic. And we know just from following price the way that we do, um, oftentimes it's, you know, the quote unquote random that I talk about, right? It's, it's just, you know, way too random for it to be a, a sudden buy or sell at a specific level, right? Um, but with all of that being said, I buy into the idea that um, there's an algorithm delivering price. And if the job of that algorithm that is delivering that price is to go find liquidity, aka money, um, you know, the expectation is that at some point these are probably going to get swept. Now to build off of that, right, her, uh, the way that she identified this breaker, that resonated with me. And I said to myself, okay, look, I mean, I, I, I think we could go higher, right? Um, and we can get that change of structure. We did get it here to create the breaker, right? Low, high, lower, low. It didn't quite take out that liquidity. So that's just one red flag to me in that in that sense. But overall, we swept this high right here. That kind of gives me a little bit of you know confidence creating that breaker that we could have some upside here, right? Now with all of that, I looked at it as okay, at this point, and I actually got, I got a really nice entry on this. It was towards the bottom of the breaker. Um, I said to myself, okay, if I, um, or I'm sorry, the, the midpoint of the breaker and all it took was one candle for me and, uh, I'll send in, you know, the percentage I got on this. I think I got 35% on just this one candle. Right. And I was using the CE as my entry 
and I was using the low of the breaker as my stop loss, right? So I weighed the risk reward there, right? I wasn't gung ho. Oh, this is 100% absolutely going higher, but I was able to be structured in that. Okay. I knew where the trade kind of went bad. And if it were to go bad, I'll take my loss and move on. Right. Um, but that's the biggest thing. And that's kind of where, I, what I was getting at just from bringing this into conversation is that, um, you know, look, not at all times, especially right now with the indices, uh, NASDAQ, uh, the S&P, um, it really isn't as clear cut. And, you know, you might say, like, what do you mean by that? How is it not clear cut? To me, look, the fact that we've been kind of chopping and consolidating without forming any sort of imbalance is really the only thing that we formed here is a bullish water block that we're already down through uh, at this point. Um there's not many tradable higher time frame ideas coming from the current price action in the current situation. Does that mean that we we don't have or we can't trade that? Not necessarily. It to me it just makes for much more difficult and lower probability trades, right? So when you get into a, a situation where you are creating these imbalances on the highest of time frames, to me those are the best trades that you can take. For example, Roblox, we had the monthly, weekly, and daily all lining up for us. All I had to do was last week when I entered the trade was kind of wait for the hourly to kind of catch up. And was there a, a potential situation where I may have entered just a tad too early on the hourly? That's yes. But ultimately, all of those other time frames lining up for me and, you know, for anybody who's been here for a while, you know that, you know, typically when somebody asks me, hey, can you look at something? I always start on the weekly because the higher the time frame to me, the more uh, precise and accurate our, um, you know, our bias can be created from. And the reason for that is think about it. One candle on a weekly time frame is a week's worth of orders, right? If we're making those assessments off of an hourly time frame, that's one hour worth of orders in one specific candle, right? So to me, more information, the better. That's why I always tell people, hey, uh, or when they'll ask, hey, do you, do you keep on uh, extended hours trading, right? I, I personally do. One, I don't think it's harmful to, to have them on. That's one. Two, I'm getting way more information by having them on, right? A couple hours of trading prior to the market open can make a, a big difference, right? Rather than getting a potential massive gap in either direction, I might have a specific fair value gap that formed or maybe a specific volume imbalance that formed. And that way I can trade off of that specific level rather than a, a much, much larger level that, um, that risk might be too much and that might deter me from taking the trade. So by being more specific and having more information in that sense, it just gives me a much better, well mapped out trade. So that's why, you know, going back to what I was saying here, um, you know, the, the fact that we haven't created any of this, it just doesn't lead to a very clear cut trade moving forward. Um, and with that being said, of course you could still trade it, but now going back to Sean's point, I think, the ability to understand that because we're not clear cut, because we're not seeing those quote unquote layup setups, right? We have to be quick and we have to be fast. I I would go out on a limb and I'll tell you from my perspective, you could think what you want about me as a trader or whatever, or my analysis or anything like that. I will tell you that I have not felt I, I not I haven't felt uncomfortable, but I haven't felt hundred percent bang the table long in a couple a couple of weeks now right have i had winning trades in that time period sure um i think what's kind of helping me get through because i am having a pretty good you know last couple of weeks is that um experience is finally kicking in for me and what do i mean by that um so if we were to go back about a year and a half maybe you know maybe even shorter I would be trying to trade every single one of these moves that occurs all day, every day. Now, I think just from my own personal experience, um, and you know, the idea behind this group is hopefully by me saying this kind of stuff, instead of you needing to see it five, six, seven times, maybe it's one or t once or twice, and you're saying, oh, you know, shit, he might be onto something. Maybe this is not really a, a tradable day. That's a home run for me. That's a win for me, right? Just by kind of letting that, you know, my own personal experience of me getting my ass kicked trying to trade on choppy bullshit days, um, 
uh, you hearing that and then you seeing it, maybe that'll save you three or four days of you trying to trade this bullshit shop and getting your ass kicked. You know, that that's the idea and the aim here because I've been through it. I know, um, you know, Ryan as well. Ryan's been trading for a long time using these uh, concepts as well. And, you know, it's all good and great to know all of these concepts, even, even if you don't use these concepts. It's all good and great to have a, you know, a, a repeatable model that works over and over again. You can back test. All of that stuff is all good and great. But there's just certain situations where the probability of success is much lower for me when you have candles like this, not only on a weekly on a daily, you don't have any imbalances forming on the daily either. See how garbage this PA is, right? And it's easy to say after the fact, but we, we've been able to tell um, throughout this process because we're not forming these imbalances. Look how little of respect we've had, we had for this imbalance in itself, right? That should tell you everything you need to know. We are not respecting PD arrays. Price action is choppy. We are not creating new imbalances. These are probably much, much lower uh, probability setups that we're going to get. And with that, how we can, does that mean, no, you can absolutely not trade this? No, it, I'm not saying that it does. It just means that our trade ideas might be coming from a smaller time frame. And every time for every time frame that you go down and go lower into, right? To me, the, uh, probability for smooth and successful trading goes down just a tick. It doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It's not going to work out the way that you want it to. But to me, the most probable or the best type of setups that you can look towards and trade are when you have all the time frames working in conjunction with one another. For example, Roblox. Let's. I, and I know this is an example I'm going to beat into the ground, but this leads me into my next point. So if we're just to go over here and let me just pull up a, a monthly on it. Um, and just to kind of show you guys why I even said in the assignments, like, yo, take a look at Roblox, right? I'm not going to be here saying, yo, buy this, sell this. That's not what I do. I don't think that's helpful. But what I will tell you is this, and on how I would identify something like Roblox as a potential trade, right? Because we all want to find these, right? And again, I'm not I'm not here to tell everybody if you if you need to be told uh, what to trade or, or any of that nonsense, um, you're in the wrong place. And I hate to say that, but I'm just telling you that from my own personal uh, experiences that when I was listening to other people and looking for trade ideas from other people, oftentimes, you know, were there winners in there for sure. But the difference is that everyone's. Own, their own management and risk management, their own risk tolerance is going to be different, right? Some people might be able to see Roblox go down to $33 like myself. I was cool with that. Where does the trade go bad for me? Below that low, right? I was cool with that. But on the flip side of that, um, I, I'm personally, you know, I'm, I'm swinging this. I'm, I'm not going to be really stoked and thrilled unless I can close it up here, 47.41. I bought time on these contracts. I'm, I'm going to let some of them ride. Right? I'm going to I'm going to take profits because that is the responsible thing to do, of course, and try and at least cover my initial position, which I'm pretty close to doing right now, believe it or not. At the high of the day, I was really, really close. I hit like 92 percent on them and then kind of hovered and closed out the day around 70 percent. Right. So if I can cover my initial position, right, that way I can take profits and now I'm playing playing free. But I want this to go to 4741. Does that mean somebody who took this trade that we identified and oh, I already took profits. Is that a winner or a loser to you? Hey, that's it, it's different for everybody. I mean, it's a sick win, but you know, I, I had higher hopes for it. And that was the idea that I went in prior to even entering the trade. And that's okay, right? Everybody is different. And that's my point here that everybody has those differences. And whether you want you know, a, a specific target, right? You, I could be targeting that relative equal high. You can be saying to yourself, ah, you know, what? I'm just going to look for the hourly high. I'm going to take a contract that might be a month shorter uh, or a only a month out or maybe a couple weeks out in duration. And I'm not going to play it all that long. Right. But it's going to be, it, it's going to vary, right? This very well could have just stuck in the mud for the next two weeks, your contract, maybe a dud. And then uh, the next week after your contract expires, this thing goes bananas, right? That's the thing. And that's why I don't think it's always going to line up with how you're trading something versus somebody else is trading something. Maybe those people who were maybe given those alerts or something. And, and that's why I think, and, and this had happened to me in the past too. I was in previous groups and I'll tell you the group that I was in, 
uh, the first group that I ever joined, I was not an admin in it. I was just a, a normal trader. Um, I was cool with the guy just from Twitter, um, but I was really interested in learning from him. And I'll tell you, he's awesome. He knows what he's doing. He's a very good trader. Uh, he stocks Pilgrim on um, on uh, on Twitter. He doesn't post much anymore. He's he was great. He he knew what he was doing. Um, there was just certain situations where um, you know my risk parameters didn't align with his, and um, you know that's why I, I you know it wasn't that his callouts were were bad or anything like that. It was just you know it it, it didn't meet the same risk uh, criteria as, as what I would have had. Right. So there were a few times where I lost on some stuff that he talked about. And then, you know, I, I kind of had to say like, yo, I'm not, I'm not interested in that anymore. I, I need to learn how to do this and do it for myself because now the only person that I can get mad at, at a failure is, is myself, right? If I'm going into something and, you know, I said it in the chat earlier, buying off air, right. You're just buying something just to buy it and be a part of something. No, no. I, I want to have a, a, bulletproof thesis that way even if i'm wrong i can at least come back and say hey it just went against me right it was it was not nothing to do with my analysis i've seen my analysis work hundreds and hundreds of times it's it's not it's not me right it was a situation where it was a failure it's gonna happen it's a part of it and if you can't be a good loser you're you're in for a rude awakening doing this so with all of that being said how can we solidify and find a way to I, I identify these high, the highest of probability setups, but still be okay with the potential of a failed trade, right? Would I have lost money if Roblox went below this low and took out my stuff? Of course, that would have sucked, right? I would have lost, right? But it was never going to be a, an amount of money that I wasn't able to handle, right? Also, I had so many layers of... Um, you know, to this thesis as to why I thought price was going to react the way that it did. And I'm, I'm okay with the result after that, right? Putting in the work in the, you know, the past, right? And, you know, I hate to say it, out of the 93 people that we have doing or, or in the Google Classroom, I think nine people did the Roblox assignment. You know what I mean? But it wasn't about Roblox. It's about the process to get to a point where you can identify these bangers like this because, you know, as it is, Roblox, you know, at one point it was up like $6 from um, the low of, you know, whatever, 30th, whenever the 30th was, that was when we um, had, had charted it. But, you know, that that's beyond the point. The point is that you can identify these without anybody else, right? Um, it's, and it's really, I don't think it's a very difficult process, right? I think it helps having an idea of um, how do we identify imbalances, how do we identify a range, and how do we identify the draw on liquidity. Those three things all together, I think those are, uh, you know, ne completely necessary. But how do we do so and find something that might line up on all of these different time frames? Think about it. If you can identify the draw on liquidity, you're well ahead of the game, right? You have an idea of where price is likely to go, right? How do, how, what helps us get to the point of identifying liquidity? What's our current market structure? Okay, we, all right, well, on Roblox, we have a bearish structure, but our smaller time frame is bullish, and we know that oftentimes price likes to retrace to 50%, right? I'm not, I'm not saying anything crazy. Look it up, right? That whole folder of Mando model that shows you price retracing back to 50%, even on the most vicious and deadly of, of down moves, right? Or are up moves, right? Price likes to retrace to 50%. It's just a, a, for whatever reason, whether it's a, a program inside this algorithm that we talk about or, um, you know, just the basic concept of people don't want to chase those longs in premium or overpay for them. They want to get them in a discount, right? Something as simple as that. And then lastly, you know, what is our entry model? How are we going to get into this trade that we, we have a good idea of where price is going to go? And we're using an imbalance. We're using something like a breaker. I don't know, uh, really anything. We're using liquidity, right? You know, a, a different trader might have said, hey, I'm playing turtle soup here, right? I want to see this price sweep and take off, right? Boom, look at that trade, you know. 2532 turtle soup right bullish trend overall never swept this low that would have shifted market structure market structure was never shifted from this point and it still hasn't okay so from that low to that high right did we take out a high in the process we did right look where price went down to 79 percent is there an imbalance here on the monthly mm -mm. 
is there one on the weekly? Maybe. Is there one on the daily? Maybe, right? So you do have a basis for the trade as a result of that, right? Um, oh, but anyways, going back to what I'm talking about, but having those three ideas in your back pocket, fantastic, okay? So here's how I would kind of go through any ticker. We can look at any ticker. It doesn't matter. I'm just using Roblox as an example because it's you know one that kind of played well today. Um, but anyways, from... The monthly perspective, we noticed that last month we got into this monthly bullish fair value gap, okay? So from that point, we say to ourselves, okay, um, you know, that's good and great. We ended up sweeping the low of last month too. All right, so, you know, w what can we anticipate being the draw on liquidity? If we still believe price is going higher, going to look to sweep some of these relative equal lows up here, or highs, I'm sorry, at 47.41, our draw on liquidity is, is higher from this point, right? So how, how can we use this as a model for entry, right? Okay, well, we, we can look at this imbalance, sure. Okay, even beyond the imbalance, we can look at our most recent price run. Did we take out a, a, a high with this green price run right here? Yeah, we did. We took out that high, okay? So here's our price run, okay? There's our discount retracement, 50%, bang. Right, so all of these things are starting to line up, and this is on the, one of the highest time frames that we can look at. Right, and notice how we did not take out that high with this February candle. Right, what's the high of that? 47.11. What is that here? 47.20. Okay, relative equal highs that we left behind. Right, so if we're saying to ourselves, if somebody went short here at 20, right, and potentially doubling down here at 11, 47.11. Right, that's two pools of liquidity that are overhead, right, in confluence with our discount retracement of this most recent run, and also in our overarching range. If we're anticipating 50%, those are three things that are lining up. Okay, so from this, um, okay, so going down to the weekly now, so the monthly checks out, looks pretty good to the upside. All right, great. Now, down to the weekly, let's see if we can pick up on anything else here or if it's very similar that's that's good and great but we want these to all line up on multiple different time frames that's that's the key the home run slam dunk in this situation right so now if we're to look okay we have those relative equal highs they look a little bit more clear there all right i gotta mute whoever that is sorry um sorry jill all right i just muted okay so just going back to the sorry but if we're to take a look, there's our price run that took out that high, low to high. Okay, notice how we bounced here. Why would we bounce here? That don't make sense, does it? Well, it can we justify it? Sure. Is this really a trade that we want to take? Not really. We're in premium of our range. There's a bullish fair value gap, and there's your run higher. Okay. Oh, now it kind of makes sense why we had relative equal highs. We had a bearish volume imbalance here to reject price here. Gotcha. So if we don't have enough liquidity to get up and through this bearish volume imbalance, what do you think we need more of? We probably need some more liquidity in order to drive price higher, right? There's your liquidity sweep. Here it is. And so far, so good. Okay. This imbalance had been previously filled. This one as well has been previously filled. That's why I'm anticipating a pretty smooth ride, right? I could be wrong, but I'm thinking that price can move smoothly up and through and ultimately make it pretty a uh, strong move up through those relative equal highs at that point. Okay, now I'm beefing up this thesis, right? I got the monthly checking out, I got the weekly checking out, right? Perfect. Okay, now from this point, let's go over here to the daily time frame and see, do we line up here? All right, so let's take a look. Um, very similarly, we're going to have this very similar type of range, okay, where we had that low run here to our high, no discount retracement. Ultimately, this is our discount retracement, right? How would I identify that? Well, go from the green run here. Oh, we got it. I'm sorry. Whoops. There it is. And bang. Right. So our daily range is uh, bullish with a, hold on, turtle soup type move, right? If our draw on liquidity is higher on a higher time frame, meaning we think using or from using the weekly or the monthly time frame, if we've identified our draw on liquidity or where we think price is going, if we've identified that as higher, right, this smaller time frame sweep of liquidity, we wouldn't look towards that as a market structure shift unless we're doing so in confluence on that higher time frame, right? Where does turtle soup come from? 
to me, it comes from taking liquidity in the inverse direction of our overall trend, right? We're unlocking uh, all that liquidity by taking out these lows here in order to drive price back to our, oh, whoops, higher time frame draw on liquidity, right? So daily, we swept that low. We're looking good. We still had more to the imbalance down here. This, in addition to sweeping that um, that low right here, right? Okay, now we're in business, right? Now we're starting to move higher. Great. Okay, look where pr price got stopped dead in its tracks today. All right, that, that's okay. We got up into that bearish volume imbalance here. And let me clear some of these out as well, some of these levels, because I don't uh, typically update them all that much here. Ready? Okay. So from this point... What is this telling us? Okay, well, we got into that daily bearish volume imbalance and rejected, right? We couldn't make it through in one chance. So what do you think we could do? All right, well, maybe we need to get back into one of these imbalances here to gather some of the, some liquidity. Maybe we do need to take out this low down here at 39.34 in order to trigger price for us to move higher. Or maybe we just need to get into this imbalance and use that imbalance in price as a trampoline or springboard like we would on any other time frame, any other chart, as a way for us to explode up through to, you know, what what would our first draw on liquidity be here on Roblox on this daily time frame? And to me, simply, it's it's 42.66, our most recent swing high that we can take, right? Inverse colored candle, right? There's a green candle followed by all these red. That would be our swing high to me. Right, because if we were to draw a bearish range, which you know we wouldn't, due to the fact that our monthly and our weekly are suggesting higher prices, but that's what it would be like, right? On a, in a smaller time frame. So to me, that is our draw on liquidity here. Okay. Following that, what do we have? Equal highs right here. Okay, 43.06. Then from this point, we have a bearish imbalance right here. Bearish volume imbalance, that is. Right? And we, we've gotten into this a little bit, but not quite, and not quite filled it, right? But here would be another, 4391. Following that 4391, we can view 4509, right? And then finally, we have these relative equal lows, 4711 and 20. Okay? So these are all different pools, right? And you might ask, like, oh, like, you know, we do have bearish imbalances here. Like, why would we not expect price to reject these like we did here? Rejection, boom, rejection, boom, rejection, boom, rejection, boom, rejection, boom, and then rejection here, right? Why would we and why wouldn't we anticipate price to reject this and move lower? And to me, simply put, my idea would be, well, let's look at our higher time frame. At this point, where have where do we not satisfy or where do we not get to at this point and we didn't get into discount yet right so on this way down it would make sense to me for price to get up into these bearish imbalances and reject why we we didn't satisfy that discount um you know obligation if you will right and if we come to the agreement that price likes to get down into discount more often than not prior to making its next move, then we would we would anticipate these to reject on the way down until we got down into discount. And from that point, we would anticipate price to be able to slice through these relatively easily. And this is just simply put my model from low to high, taking out a high here, right? Discount retracement and run for highs, right? Is there candles and price action that can occur in between prior to ultimately completing absolutely and that's why make that's what makes tra trading options much more difficult than trading shares right if time isn't a problem and you have an idea of where price is going to go you're not you're not worried about this at all if you're trading options you have to worry about that time component and that's why ultimately if you're looking for um you know what strike do i get right the higher the, the time frame the more time i feel like i need to buy because this trade setup in itself from roblox think about it when when was the low of roblox put in september of 2023 right that's a while right we go week by week that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen weeks just to set that range on Roblox. And since then, we've had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 weeks prior to hitting discount for that. So this can take time, right? That's the thing. Do we have any uh, 
you know, um, what's the word, um, catalysts or anything that could um, aid in moving price faster. Well, I would say not necessarily the one or one thing in addition to earnings that are coming up in the beginning of next month, which I'm not, I, I'm not banking on those. I don't need earnings in order for me to believe price is going higher. But I'm thinking from just a wider lens as well. If we're looking at potentially a, a, a wider market kind of retracement, right? And we're really expecting, you know, what, what has been running ballistic over the last couple of months? And, and you know, it's big tech names, right? Um, Roblox is not a big tech name, right? Um, it's not included in... Um, you know, these big indices and, you know, if, if it is in some sort of, uh, ETF or something like that, I, I do not believe that it has a, a wide, um, or, or a heavy weighting in anything. Right. Um, and if we were just to think about that, right. And we talk about rotation, right. Everybody wants to talk about a rotation. Oh, we're rotating into, uh, oil or energy, or we're rotating into, um, small caps or we're rotating into Chinese names. Like think about it like that. That's a topic of conversation, right? And this, this is actually, um, something that I learned from one of my buddies who works in this industry. Um, a lot of the time people who are working with funds, um, I'm not, I'm not talking about, um, people who are working at the funds. I'm talking about people who have their money with funds. Um, a lot of the times it's, it's a very competitive thing because who, which fund is going to get me the highest return, right? That's that's the idea, right? So there, there, there could be stipulations in these contracts that say, oh, I want my money active at all times, right? So rather than having money sit in cash, because sitting in cash is not making these people any money, right? And they want the highest producers, or they're going to go look elsewhere, right? And obviously, every fund wants to to have the all, all the money in the world that they can uh, manage and, and operate under. So with all of that said, um, is there a possibility for some of these names still, uh, you know, mega cap, Roblox, uh, you know, um, in terms of market cap, right? Big name, but not in the, the realm or the vicinity of something like Apple, Google, Microsoft, whatever. Um, is it a possibility that some of that money that's coming out of those names, right, ultimately you know, leading to a, a pullback or, you know, whatever you would, you would call it on NASDAQ or, or SPY, could that go into a name like Roblox that's not associated um, with those indices, but also has a pretty kick-ass setup? It's just something to think about, right? And that's speculation that I don't, I don't really like to go down, but, you know, everybody always wants to talk about, oh, like they're going to announce something, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. If you're going to believe in that kind of stuff, then why not, that type of idea of a rotation, why doesn't that come into play and that be a possibility for a reason for price to move higher, right? If we're looking for these, you know, absolute rippers, like, you know, ideally the trades that I take on NASDAQ where I get in and it moves relatively quickly, um, that's not always the case with names, especially those that aren't associated with specific indices with heavy weighting, right? Um, where, you know, we've seen days where, you know, one day Tesla will move $10, the next day it moves, uh, you know, eight dollars, or, or maybe to move one dollar, right? It, it's very uh, unpredictable in that. Whereas, you know, something like Roblox, you know, a, a two percent day for Roblox is not all that big in terms of dollar amount, right? Uh, just based on its, its stock price and and all the other stuff that is uh, associated with it. Um, but oftentimes, these names, right? I'm kind of cool with looking far out with this overall setup due to the fact that took a while for this this to set up you know i'm not banking on i don't need a catalyst to get price to where i think it's gonna go if a catalyst comes by and gets it there quicker awesome that's great for me but ultimately i i i feel like i have a pretty good idea of where price is going based on all of the analysis that we just did from the monthly down to the weekly down to um the daily and you know even if you were to break it down into the hourly you want that hourly to be moving in that same type of direction that your weekly monthly and daily are moving in that way you have four time frames all i basically in the higher time frame to play out in one specific direction in order to uh kind of put together the best thesis for what you would consider to be a high probability setup something that's going to ultimately go the way that you want it to go and how do you feel confident about that? You have to be able to go back in time, look at charts and back test. Um, because to me, it becomes a lot easier when you start to see the stuff that you're doing actually working, right? 
I can tell you all of this stuff. I can show you how I take all of my trades. It's not going to matter if you don't go back in time and see how it works for yourself because you're not, you know, you, you might, you, you could take my word for it and say, oh, no, he, you know, he does well. He knows what he's doing. Uh, that's good and great. But until you see it with your own eyes, until you're able to kind of reverse engineer a setup and say to yourself, oh, wow, oh, I see it. There it is. It works, right? Until you start to see that, I think you're not going to have – that uh, or the utmost level of confidence in order to do it in real time because it's obviously much more difficult in real time than after the fact. But if you see it enough times after the fact, after back testing and after practicing it, I think it becomes a whole lot easier as a result of that. So, um, so that is, I guess, the idea of using the higher time frame into the lower time frame to create the highest probability setups and also to tie into the idea that the fact that to me we don't have a clear higher draw higher time frame draw on liquidity on the index or indices I should say such as spy and Nasdaq it's not as clear cut and these trades are not as high probability as they would be if you have something you know, for example, like a Roblox where you have your monthly, weekly, daily, and now even the hourly time frame all working together in the same direction. To me, those lead to the highest probability trades where if you were to go, you know, back and you look at something like NASDAQ, our weekly, eh, not all that clear cut. I'm not forming any imbalances in any direction. We just got to all time highs. Um, you know, what is our draw on liquidity at this point, right? Much more difficult um, to identify that versus something like this where, um, you know, can you be wrong? Sure, you can absolutely be wrong, but you're able to put together all of these little pieces um, to at least make you feel good about it and at least make you structure a trade where you kind of have an idea of, okay, this is where I want to start to scale out a little bit. This is where I want to be all out, take all my profits. Um, this is an area where... Ah, it didn't go my way. I got to get out of here or I'm going to get absolutely smoked for my whole position, right? Um, kind of putting that together all prior to even pressing the button to get into something, um, I think that's going to boost your confidence tenfold and it's going to ultimately help you uh, farther out down the line. Um, last point is I brought this up a long time ago. I haven't really brought it up recently and I should have, but... Um, you know, one of the things, and, you know, I kind of, you know, again, earlier on before we had, um, as many people in the group, you know, I would make it known and encourage like, yo, you know, post in that post your charts channel, right? No one here is going to make fun of anybody for, for maybe, you know, quote unquote amateur charts. Nobody's like that here. Those people, if there were any ever are likely gone, I probably got into a fight with them because I think that's BS. I think you will get better not only as a um a, an analyst right because that's i guess what we're all doing we're, we're analyzing price and we're trying to put together the best idea in order for us to make money right but um i think you will get so much better at analyzing not only you know asking questions is great but also doing it yourself and putting it out there right Put it for other people to see, right? It's okay for other people to disagree, right? Redshirt, I, I respect him. I respect his analysis. I think he was on the other side and he thought Roblox was going to go down. That's fine. We can differ in opinion because ultimately, do we really know who's going to be right until you know all is said and done? No, right? We can just put together a good enough thesis and you can absolutely on a lot of these setups put together an inverse side to that trade, right? Oh, well, I, I think this is going down because ultimately I think the market's due for a bigger pullback and I think names like Roblox, which is high speculative growth, is going to get whacked, right? You could put together a thesis that completely go against mine and that's good and great, right? We're not going to know until the end, but as long as you can put together a thesis that's well mapped out. Okay, I want to try and take this short here. I want to look for the lows as my target, blah, 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 all of this. If you can put that together, you can live with the results of that, right? But you got to put it together in the first place. And that's why I think if you put yourself out there, share your charts, whether it's in the post your charts channel, anywhere in the group, I don't care, or even on Twitter, right? I'll share your ideas, right? I, you know, if for anybody who's down and into that, share them, man. Go ahead, get it out there. You're going to gain some more confidence, especially after that hard work that you're putting in. You start to turn in some good ones, right? Kale had Twilio. Twilio was good, right? That went well. 
um, Lindsay had, uh, she, she, she kind of brought Roblox to my attention. Um, I think she was looking at it from a daily perspective too. Like, you know, she had that one. Um, there's so many different names. Uh, Brian was talking about Chewy today, right? All of this you're bringing in, you know, and, and when you get those right, it's a good feeling, right? And you're going to start saying, oh, nice. I'm, you're gaining confidence in yourself and you're going to need that confidence in order to press the button um, and, you know, not freak out if, you know, maybe it goes your way. You might be freaking out because it's going your way and you're saying to yourself, oh, I don't want to get out. I don't want to get out, right? Having it mapped out before, it's, it's a great thing. It takes a lot of the stress away from you. Or on the flip side of that, ah, shit, it's going against me. Uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess I got to take my loss. Okay. Uh, versus, oh shit, now I'm getting smoked. Oh, I got another level down here. I got to wait for this one to catch in and hopefully bounce from this point. You're toast, right? The the amount that that thing is going to have to move in the other direction from that level that you're identifying is probably so big that by the time it gets there, um, you know, your contract's going to be toast and you're going to need, you know, a, a triple or, or a quadruple type move in order to make your money back plus some, right? You don't want to be in a position where you're just fighting to get back green. That's the worst position to be in, right? Because from that point, instead of looking to make money, you're just looking to break even. Now what happens when you break even? Do you take the trade off? What what happens in that situation where the trade finally does what you want it to do um, and takes off and goes to where you want it to go? You're going to be totally defeated by the process, right? That's why having an idea of where your entry could be, you know, even if, you know, you're looking at something and it's not quite where you want it to be, just set an alert, right? You could, you can do that, right? It's super easy on TradingView. You just go wherever you want and add alert on Roblox. Boom. Check, whatever. Make a random one, create. There it is. Okay. And you can move it wherever you want, right? So you say to yourself, oh, you know what, I, I, I want to, if I can get an opportunity down here at this uh, gap open on the weekly on Roblox, whether it's this week, next week, whenever, I'm taking it. Okay, great. Awesome. You know, that that's a, that's a plan in itself. Guess what? If it never happens, oh, well, right? There's a million other names you can look towards to, to help you get to that point. So, um but uh, so anyways, I know, I know it's long winded, um, and everything like that. This is recorded if anybody wants to go back to it, but, um, just the idea that everybody can do this, right? Everybody can go back using higher time frame. go through any ticker. I have a list of, you know, whatever I have over here, you know, all of these names and I just click them. If they look good. All right. I'll dive deeper. If they don't meet the criteria for me, uh, usually it's on the weekly time frame. If it's, if I don't have a clear cut draw on liquidity, then I just go to the next, right? Um, now with futures, of course, I do. I am a futures trader, um, so I don't want to completely neglect because there are smaller time frame setups and everything like that. But I do understand, you know, through experience because I've been on the other side of it that um, more often than not, when you don't have a clear cut draw on liquidity on a higher time frame. Um, you know, those trades might be short lived, might be better off to just move your stop and profit once you get them. That way, even if it goes against you, oh, well, I, I made a couple bucks or oh, I broke even. All right. I'm not getting killed on this trade. Right. I'm not going to let something go up four hundred, five hundred dollars and then end up red five hundred dollars on the trade. Right. That that just can't happen. That's not sustainable over the long term. And it's something that it's difficult to deal with for sure. Um, but. Again, when it's not clear cut, when you don't have a clear cut higher time frame draw, and you might have one, you might be able to put together a perfect thesis on Nasdaq right right now, right? I personally can't. I'm being honest. I, I you know, I'm, I'm very torn. But you might be able to put together something, and you say, oh, you know, that works for me, and you're able to use that as a way to trade off of. That's great, right? But I'm, I'm just being real. Uh, there's a lot of times on a lot of different names where I say to myself, eh, I, I don't, I don't really know. It's, it's not clear and easy. And if it's not clear and easy for me to identify, move on, on to the next. There's a bunch of other names you could look at. So, um, okay. So let me just look, um, see if we got any questions. Um, does breaker only occur if a single candle cut the level? Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, let me see. Um, and you were saying how many DTE? Are you, are you, I think you're talking about the the trade I took on SMCI. So I, I only took one week out on SMCI. I had a pretty short leash on it. So, um, and again, 
this was not like a, a, a massive trade or anything like that. I was kind of hoping that I would get some end of the day fireworks, which, you know, it, it ended up running pretty well. I mean, from, I, I think I entered around nine Oh six. So a, a little bit above that, um, imbalance here. Where is it here? Um, and you know, decent, like an $8 move on the, the ticker. Um, they were a little gassed up in terms of price. Um, but, you know, I was hoping that we get some end of the day fireworks. We ended up not getting it, right? But I think your your question was um, on the break, right? So once we break that high, right? That's a shift in structure. So we can use this and identify this level as a breaker at that point, right? And you'll notice that look where price came back down to bottom of the breaker and then ran again. Not enough juice to keep on moving higher, right? And that's why, um, you know, despite making some money on this, I'm not totally sold that we're gonna leave the station here uh the fact that we couldn't break through this um that just leaves me like you know kind of questioning do we need more liquidity where would we get that liquidity and it's down here at those relative equal lows that's double the pool down here right and i know smci is not a uh nasdaq ticker or anything like that but i i do think nasdaq's gonna move a little lower uh take out those equal lows um prior to potentially moving higher again so that would line up here but again it's like even with all of that being said right i was wrong on this ultimately right i i wanted to see it take off it didn't right i had to close the options uh due to the time of the day but guess what still it paid fine you know i'll, I'll take it it was like i mean i have the screenshot of it hold on i'll get you the exact number it was 34.8 percent so I took 34.8% on, on something that was quick. You know, it wasn't a big position for me. Um, it was just something that I saw that, um, again, Christina brought it up. I looked at it and I said, oh, wow, okay, there's a breaker. It's pretty pretty well defined in terms of my risk. I could see it going down, so I, I need to make sure that I'm stopping here and not letting it go down to 855 because then my option is worth zero. Um, but also, like, if price were to bounce and go, go get some liquidity up here prior to moving down here ultimately that that's fine so to me it was worth the risk reward and again this candle in itself that was worth 34 point whatever eight percent right so that they that's cool um but it's all about the structure that this sets up right whether it plays or whether it doesn't play you have structure behind your trade you have an idea of where you want to take your or stop out you have an idea of where you want to take profit it's all well defined and that's the most important part you're not buying off of air you're not just saying to yourself oh um i'm just gonna pick a random candle over here oh like i'm, I'm going long here well why are you going long here what is what is telling you to uh, or what what is giving you any inkling that this might be a good idea for a long right i couldn't tell you right that wouldn't be a trade that i would take did we run up a little bit sure um is it something that i would still take nope probably not right bearish range okay did we get into 50 percent of that range we did right uh my model would end here right which it did bearish imbalance right i'm just going to show you that this my setup in itself it happens all the time there it is 50 percent of the range bing okay Ooh, that sucks that's ugly but guess what dump rejected end of story there's the completion of my model there now here's a, another situation okay whoops hold on okay there it is price run that took out these lows discount retracement check did we get into the bearish amounts not on the hourly time frame no we did not nope but we got into discount and ultimately flush okay so if that's the case that's our new range and guess what we got a structure shift right so again to me that is enough for me to at least give this thing a chance uh for a long specifically targeting those relative equal highs which i wanted to but i also did not want to carry anything overnight knowing we have ppi or yeah um in the morning um just not really for me but this wouldn't shock me and neither would that but how can i structure this idea overall right to me i played it for the long and the reason why i played it for the long was because uh we did shift structure i know it's only on an hourly time frame but ultimately i i thought we were going to move higher from this point and even the daily doesn't didn't look all that oh shit hold on even the daily on it um i have a buddy who 
I liked his uh, analysis, and you know he had something like this. Um, and ultimately, SMCI would be absolutely toast if we couldn't get this closed back inside here. So that was a pretty important spot to kind of hang on to. But that was that was just the idea there. It wasn't a big trade or anything, but it was it was alright. Um, uh, how do you get to Roblox if miss the turtle soup like now it's already running a lot yeah well you can wait for some sort of retracement into an imbalance and discount of a range because um more often than not these things don't just go up or go down right you you a lot of the time you're going to get another opportunity at an entry and you know whether it's roblox or whether it's something else um i think you know something that crushes a lot of people is the idea that oh i, I gotta get in this this is going to be an absolute banger now you're probably late. Um, you're you're probably getting another opportunity at it at some point, but uh, you know you don't want to buy it up here, knowing that price could retrace down into discount of that most recent run. And if it were to do so, you know that could put you behind the eight ball. And if God forbid things were to go against you, not only did you lose on that entire retracement, but now you lost beyond um, what you would have if you were to just wait for discount to enter. If that makes sense. So rather than risk 20, 30% of the range, now you're risking 70 to 80% of the range for the trade to go bad. You'll probably be looking to get out of the trade by the time it's ready for it to pick back up and start moving higher again. If that makes sense. Um, but I'm looking, I'm looking over here. Oh, I thought I saw somebody typing. Maybe not. Oh, I see faulty. You're typing. <clears throat> and just to just to expand while faulty's typing, like what I meant by that is, let's say up here, you're saying to yourself, oh, we got that discount retracement right here. Oh, yeah, it's up here. Mm, it's going to shred. I got to get in. I got to get in. Well, you added here at 1000 Now you're down 15, or 150 bucks, right? And where does the trade go bad? Uh oh, right. So instead of risking 20%, you're risking 70% of that range, right? So you're already down 50% of the range prior to the area where you could have entered, right? So um, being picky in particular, to me, I'd much rather be picking a particular and potentially miss a trade opportunity versus do anything to get in and get smoked before it's even ready to start moving. TTT, I think, looks really good on the weekly with relative strength in the market today. I think probably good chance. Test 114. Haha. <laughs> Yo, faulty. So um, I'll go over it right now. But go on uh, go on X and type at Mando Trading money sign TTD. This is one we've been on for, for a while. This is actually the second run on it. Uh, I, I like it a lot. Um, and I actually have, I have uh, shares of it. So, um, so here's the setup on TTD. Um, let's look at the monthly. I don't know if I looked at the monthly when I did my initial analysis on this, but, uh, yeah, so we created a monthly bullish imbalance, but we didn't quite get into it. I don't think we necessarily have to, but there's your 114 that I had identified. And, um, yeah, yeah. So, um, it actually completed, um, my model last time around. So let's see price run to take out that high, right? I'm not going to be using this run up. Why? Well, if you were to use that, you already got my model. Low, high, discount retracement run for highs. Now, what was the price run to take out this high and that high all together? And then you can come on over and just, um, you know, low, two, high, discount retracement run for highs, right? So that was the first time that we uh, had I, I identified this and the first time I traded it. Um, but here's round two, right? Does this mean that it's going to get in here and take off right away? doesn't necessarily mean that i like the odds of that but um you know it is what it is i mean it, the initial or the the first leg would complete at 94 that's where my model finishes so from your low to your high here's your discount retracement there's your run for highs right that's that's ideally what we're going to get um you know time is always uh, an annoying factor here but um that's why i took sh uh, shares a bit
you know, I don't have as much skin in the game, right? I could buy options for much cheaper, but then I have to deal with the time component of it. Um, and in a name like this, I, I have a lot of open trades right now, so um, to take more risk on options, I'm just like, eh, you know, I, I'd rather just uh, take the shares, maybe make less money, but not have to sweat the timing, which I, I'm, I'm, I usually don't mind, but um, just again, I, I, I do have a lot of open trades right now, so it is a lot to manage. That's one thing that, you know, uh, at, you know, at first, you know, I, I would, you know, personally, once, once I got good at like managing one trade at a time, then I was like, all right, now I can take a couple. Um, and you know, when you have a lot going on at once, you know, there could be a situation where you might overlook something, you know, if you're not like keyed in all day, every day, which I'm trying to avoid doing being on the computer all day, every day, like, um, you know, cause it is really draining and you, I don't want to say boring, but you just like, it, it becomes a drag and I don't want it to become a drag. I want to continue having fun doing this. So I don't want to be sitting here all day, every day managing all of these positions, but I know that I can trade all of these positions. Um, just have some that are on higher alert. AKA the trades that I'm in options on, those are on much higher alert because I want to, um, what's it called? Um, I got, I got to be time sensitive with those. I don't really mind with the, um, the shares because I don't have to fight the clock, but, um, I actually set an alert on TTD today. Um, where is it? Um, oh man, I don't have it. Maybe it was on this chart on the 15 minute time frame. Hold on. Might've been this. Um, well, I definitely set an alert. I don't know. Where's my alerts tab? I don't know if, which chart it was on that I saved it. Let's see. Where's the... Here it is. Here it is. Aha! I knew I had it. Yeah, so I had it just in discount. Look, if I miss this trade, it is what it is. But now we have relative equal highs. So ideally, we would... <laughs> shit the bed in the morning, come back down to discount. Now we have relative equal highs, relative equal high, relative equal high, right? We don't have many imbalances in between here cutting us all from all of these. So that would be the most ideal situation. Can I miss this trade? Yeah, right. We got into this bullish imbalance here, right? If price were to run from this point, didn't satisfy my model. and But all that's telling you is that the range isn't set. So I'll revisit it another time, but I knew I sent alert for this today. Um... But yeah, that's that's really I've been using the features a lot more. And if you don't use Trading View, I don't think you need it. You 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 can use Weeble and stuff. I think the alerts function is really good. And I don't know if Weeble has it. If it does, you can take advantage of it. You can just be scrolling through and say, oh, all right, well, uh, you know, maybe have a list of names. Okay, meets my requirements for a long on the higher time frame, uh, weekly, monthly. They check out. Great. Now you have a list of four or five names, and you can go through them and say, oh, all right, look, if price gets down to here, I have an alert set. I'll give it a shot. I'll have an alert set for where the trade goes bad. You know, oh, the trade goes bad down here. Great. Okay, I'm out. Whatever, right? But you can just do all of that so that it's not so overwhelming in the moment when, uh, you know, the lights are on and they're shining bright. Um, you know, it takes a lot of stress out of it. So.